Happy Monday, COP family, and welcome to your message recap. My name is Larisha Johnson, and as always, it's an honor, and I'm always excited to welcome our very own Elder Cindy Kane. How you doing? Oh, you're on mute. Good gracious. Good to see you both. <laughs> it's good to be here with the two of you, and I'm excited for this conversation with our family. Oh my gosh, I am too. And we are always excited to welcome. He is no stranger here to to the message recap. Our very own Pastor Dennis Armstrong. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. Glad to be on uh, today. Appreciate the opportunity. It's going to be a good discussion. I cannot wait to jump into this, y'all. Y'all already, if you've seen or you were either seen the online broadcast or been in any of the in-person celebrations, you already know, like, we're about to jump into this thing. So, but before we do that, um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, as always, you can download um, the sermon itself or the notes on our mobile app, our COP mobile app. You can visit our website. That's www.cop.church. And again, you can download the sermon notes, um, a lot of wealth of information on our website. So make sure that you're tapping into that resource. Um, there's information about Omni groups, events that are happening um, in, at the Center of Praise. So you want to make sure you're plugged into what's happening at the Center. And with that, I think we are ready to get started. Um, let's see what I got here. I'm going to pull up my notes. I felt like I heard a ding go off. So hopefully you didn't hear the ding go off because I know I put on my do not disturb, but I'm not <laughs> Distracted. So there we go. We are talking because we're walking in purpose. We are talking about uh, activating our purpose. That's the series that we're in. And this weekend's teaching uh, was entitled Walking in Your Purpose Literally. Um, I say literally a lot, probably more than I should, but er everything is literally. Um, so I appreciated that. Uh, the scripture reference for this weekend is Acts 3, 1 through 10. Um, and I really, if you have a chance to download the sermon notes, I highly suggest you do because I really like how um, Pastor Dennis laid it out with like verse by verse. So there's a note like for each verse as far as like what, what to glean from each verse of the scripture. So I highly recommend you do so. Um, and so the first um, question we'll talk through was one of the first points you brought out in the message, Pastor, and it was about not allowing our purpose to stop us from the basics, like the basics of prayer the basics of being in church and fellowship and the, and the basics of studying our word. And, and we'll start with you, Pastor Dennis. What I wanted to know is um, what are some of the misunderstandings do you think we may have about purpose that cause us to either miss the basics or sometimes even abandon the basics? No, totally. Um, you know, I think speaking for myself, I think you sometimes get into this place where you think purpose is some like, I don't know, some end goal, end game that you get to. And it's like, you graduate, mm. like, and you get to your purpose and now in your purpose, you know, like where, when you're in high school for, you know, oh, maybe, well, maybe college is a better example, but after you, when you're in college and you realize you're about to graduate, you're excited because you have no more work to do. You can just go about getting into your career and making this money. And I feel like it's in some ways the same here where it's mm. like, I'm putting in the work, I'm putting in the, you know, the prayer, the fasting, the church, the Bible readings and all that. But once I get into my purpose, I kind of graduate from those things and get to just operate in my purpose and lay hands on folks and be on big stages and people know that I'm amazing and all these things. And I can just operate based on what I've done over the past, however many years, it you know, to get to my purpose. And when you really think about that you're so focused on yourself you know when we talk mm -hmm. about purpose you really emphasize my but in reality it's his purpose it's his purpose for my life right and so if we keep that in perspective then we will know okay if it's his purpose and I should probably stay tapped in with him and the best way to do that is in his word and prayer and at the church house um so I think that probably is more than anything the selfish outlook that we have on our purpose and you know in speaking for a past for as a preacher of the gospel you can get caught up in seeing oh well you know Stephen Furtick is like this or T.D. Jakes is like that and you're like oh I'm gonna get like that one day and then sermons are gonna come how just somehow just start flowing and people are gonna like places and it's like bro unless you know your bible ain't no one asking you nowhere right, right? <laughs> But we just think we're going to get to a place where it's just going to start flowing. And the only way it flows from the day you meet Jesus until the day you see him again is if you're at his feet and in his word. Mm. Mm. That is so good. 
because I think it's part of our culture too, right? Like we go, like you said, you know, by the time we're in college, but it starts in like elementary, it's always a graduation. You graduate from kindergarten, you graduate from elementary to middle, like you look forward to taking those next steps and being done with that, right? Like I'm now moving on to the next. And so I don't, you don't even, you're not even, we're not even taught to look back to the foundation, to look back to kindergarten, to, to go back to what we learned in kindergarten, right? Um, but that's where we learn to read. That's where we learn to sound out the <laughs> yeah. letters and the sound, right? So that's that's so excellent. Yeah. Oh, I wonder your take on that, Elder Cindy. That's so good. Well, I would say even using that example, Risha, like even though I think we think in our own mind, yes, I'm done with that grade and now I'm going to that. But like good curriculum built upon each other anyway, right? So we don't even realize that we do need to uh, rely on lessons learned right past experiences but also just the, the 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 habits if you will or the um yeah the habits that you gained along the way right as you're learning you know in school as you're learning to read it requires you to read more mm -hmm. right because that's how you you know keep learning to read you know everything and so um and it reminds me, and I think we even had this convert this this point last week is like looking at your purpose like it's a checklist. Mm -hmm. You know, my purpose will be this degree or reaching it to this title or whatever. And then once you're once you do that, then what? Right? As Bishop said last week, it's not stagnant, right? It continues to grow. And so if it's gonna continue to grow, then we're there we're gonna we're gonna be required to take the lessons learned from those, you know foundational basics so good so so good oh my gosh and, and i thought about even that that point about like going back to kindergarten sometimes uh, to your point elder cindy about good curriculum in school um you don't when it's good you don't realize that you're relying on or you're going back to the because it's a part of you now it's a foundation right so what makes us think that we would not need to rely on the foundation of prayer and of reading our word and to that's so good so so good and, and it's and it's really it's really prevalent in unfortunately I, I i've just experienced a lot where i experience people who you know get to this point where they think man like i got it you know and mm -hmm. it's a scary thing because i've been at a place where not to necessarily think that i got it but that I don't have to earnestly seek him mm -hmm. you know well i get to a place where i think man i got i got sermons packed i stacked up you know what i'm saying and so like i don't have to earnestly seek him i got this you know i got the curriculum and it's still like no man but you're not understanding what it is you're not understanding what it really means and it's unfortunate because beyond even you know i'm talking from a preacher beyond even that my own personal relationship with god there's so much that, you know, we can, if we go back to the book of Genesis and go back to the book mm -hmm. of Acts, and maybe you see some of those notes that you took in your Bible and you, I've gone back and be like, eh, that was wrong. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and scratch that out, you know, and because it's a living word and he continuously is teaching yeah. you, healing himself to you. And to think that I'm going to read the Bible one time and be like, okay, I got it, you know, like, that's insane. Like in it, and it, and it does your purpose a disservice and it, his purpose a disservice in your life and the people around you, because mm -hmm. you have any kind of fresh word to give somebody. I have a brother of mine, man, and I love this dude, but every time he's asked to give a word, he gives the same scripture. I've been in with him in different locations and not like a sermon word, but if someone says, brother, you got a, a word for the small group right here, it's always the same thing. And it's cool. Right. But I don't know. It was Holy Spirit driven. It was, man, my, my bank, my memory bank is really yeah. low. It's one thing, you know? And so I just, man, I hope, mm -hmm. I hope that we as believers can get to a point. The basics is where it's at. There will never be a point where there's something on, like the basics are where it's at. And if you stick from the rest of your life, if you stay in the basics, I mean, it's simple. Read your Bible, go to church, fellowship with people. Like if you stick to those main things, you are going to be good. But mm -hmm. it's when we're over spiritual and we are moved on to it. We promoted to a new something spiritual. Like you never promote from the basics. Like you, right. it's like our, our, um, our school example is great, but we had like, 
it's like, okay, what I learned in kindergarten, I'm going to keep learning it. Like I'm going to keep staying in that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I keep doing that so that as I continue to move on, I keep having that, that those lessons learned. And I, yeah. Y'all, I see first question in. I was like, I already knew the first question. <laughs> in. I already do. Um, but I think that sets up sets us up for the the next discussion point really well. And it was a point you brought about, you know, if we sticking with the basics and then just walking in that, um, being available to people and people begin to ask for what they see. The example that you use, I'm gonna pull it out on my notes here, was the man that um was actually, you know, laid before the gate or before like the temple strategically, right? To to ask of, of alms, right? And so, you know, he's asking for alms because he's he's seeing people like you guys, you probably got money. I'm gonna ask it. You look like you got money, I'm gonna ask you for it. Um and you you said in, in the teaching that people ask for what they see and they do. And I was thinking, I said, I think people also ask based upon their expectation of what they see and their sometimes even their assumptions of what they see. And you were asking us, what do people see when they when they look at you? And I was like, oh. So so I wanted to talk about, maybe we'll start with you, Elder Cindy, is mm -hmm. what, what would it look like uh, for us to really evaluate what we put out in the world? Like how, how, how would we begin to really know what people see? Yeah, I think that that's such, such a good question. And I think that when we're eva evaluating what we're putting out into the world, it requires us to look at what we're putting in to ourselves, right? Um, and like what we're valuing. And so, because I, I think it's interesting when we're, and I, you know, I appreciate the example of Pastor Dennis during the sermon of, you know, you know, what does my, you know, what do my clothes look like? You know, what does the, you know, physical being look like? And I think, you know, and we've all been on the receiving end of that when we're talking to someone and we really want to connect, like, right? but they're so superficial. And so once we get past, whatever labels, you know, all of that, you're like, wow, this person has nothing to offer. Right. And so, you know, then you kind of just move on and you know what I'm saying? And so we don't want to be that person. And so it's really about, of, you know, what am I pouring? And perhaps it's, you know, I'll be drawing folks in with these, I don't know, you know, cool shoes or whatever, but then, you know, past that part, what else do I have to offer? Right. And, and being reminded from this lesson that we should be able to offer joy, right? We should be able to offer peace. We, we should be able to offer a word from God that is fresh and that is for their situation, right? Um, but that requires for all, of, you know, for us to make sure that we're putting that into us. I had not thought about that. We can't put out, which, I mean, yeah, I mean, whatever we're putting out is based upon what we're putting in. That's so good. Thank you for that. Mm. Man, I wish you would have said that, Elder Cindy, when I so I could have said it at some point because that is fire. It is. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, hold on, Jesus. So yeah, that um that is facts, and that's such a practical way because again, it's the the but going back to the basics. It's it's getting the word in you because that's the only way that you know we talked about in the service the fruit of the spirit in Galatians five or love First Corinthians thirteen. Only like you don't just happen to have patience. I mean, I know for sure. You don't just happen to wake up one day and all of a sudden I'm patient. No, like that's not how it works. You have to be intentional. You have to allow that to be poured into you through the word of God and through um, uh, communion with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way that you begin to have patience. You begin to be kind. You begin to have self-control. Man, you know, as some, I'm gonna speak for myself as someone who struggles with things and Temptations are so much heavier when I am not in my word. Mm. Temptations are so much heavier when I'm not communing with the Holy Spirit. When I'm in the word, when I'm with the Holy Spirit, the same temptations come up, but it's so much easier for me to just turn around and not pay, not give in. But it's when I am, am letting my flesh take over me because I'm not in my word, because we have to know that if we're not diligent with our reading, if we're not diligent with the spiritual side of things, then we're being diligent with our flesh. I mean, that's what we're doing. It's, it's either one or the other. So if my lack of diligence with the spirit means I'm overly diligent with the flesh. Wow. And so that's what we have to make sure that we are doing, because that's the only way people are going to see what they need to ask for. And, you know, Elder Cindy brought out a good point about, you know, shoot, I, I know I feel like we sell and I'm, I'm I do this. I feel like we sell people short 
when we say like, hey, I'm going to wear, because I do this when I go to young people churches, I'll wear Jordans, I'll wear this because I'm like, man, I, I want to get their attention. But you know what? Whether you're five years old or 50 years old or 100 years old, everybody's looking for peace. Everybody's looking for joy. Everybody's looking for acceptance. Everybody's looking for love. We're all looking foundationally for the same things. And if we can just exude that, man, that just comes out of our pores. People are going to be like, I could care less about those 11s unless they're the bread 11s. But anyways, they um, <laughs> but I'm going to look at that brother's joy in his heart, the peace on his face. I know he just lost a loved one, but look at the way he's so at peace. I know he just lost his job, but how does he still have joy? People of any age are going to be attracted to what God has to offer. And we sell what God has to offer so short. We think we have to put it in a bow. We have to tie a ribbon on it. Nah, if it's just the unadulterated fruit of the spirit, if it's the raw and uncut love of God, that transcends all generations. And every person will want that and ask for it. Yeah. Uh, what, what? Go, go That's ahead. bars. Bars, okay. That's bars. Bars. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to know, like, what is it, why do you think we do that sometimes? Like, in our effort to, I guess, catch, be fishers of men, um, like, why do we think sometimes, and I don't want to use the word watered down, but I guess, what, is, what do you think sometimes the motive is behind that? Where we thinking, do, are we are ourselves out. not confident in that and understanding that people really do want the full, unadulterated, like, gospel? They want the full Jesus, not the watered down version. Like, what do you think sometimes causes us to shy back. Yeah, I mean, um, I can jump in all that Elder Cindy, um, close it out with this, but you know, I, I we water down, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I feel like it's a mix between, we assume that people want a certain thing. We assume that. And then we also probably have a lack. We think like we have to add, or in this case, take away from the gospel we can't give the whole thing because it's going to be too much and that's insane because, yeah. ha have you ever said oh we can't give somebody too much good news have you ever right, said, right. Ever said, oh i don't want to flood them with too many too much good news they won't be able to handle it we would never say that <laughs> in reality but we do that with the literal good news of the gospel every time oh we can't give them too much of the gospel but the gospel is good news though but I just, I, I feel like that's, so, I'm glad we're talking about that because I have to know that, that man, you can never give somebody enough good news, AKA you can never give somebody enough gospel. Mm. That's helpful cool for me because I'm just even talking it through because that was one of the things like, well, do I, do I assume sometimes it's too much? I'm like, and where does that come from? It wasn't too much for me. I wanted it all. <laughs> like, right. 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 Wow. So good. Uh, I that think, is good. Um, and really quick, and I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Someone's Jordans weren't going to be enough to pull me out of my depression. Mm. Someone's right. water right. Down gospel was not going to be enough to pull me from the corner of the dope house when I was doped out of my mind. And I was thinking that there was nothing less. And I was just counting down the days until my life was over. Like the watered down gospel was not going to do mm. that. It had to be the real gospel. It had to be. It had to be verbatim, precept by precept, line by line, verse by verse. It had to be the true gospel of Christ. That's the only gospel that pierces the darkness. It's the only gospel that the darkness can't even comprehend, let alone overcome. That is what takes care of all of this nonsense on earth and brings people into the eternal life with Christ. That's the only way is the real gospel. And we just Man, we water down the gospel so much. Oh, I'm going to this part of town. You know, these people are this way. So why don't you hit them with this? Because they'll be able to latch onto it. Like, you don't have to do all that. If what you're serving is good, then you don't have to worry about trying to figure out a way for people to eat it. Just make sure it's good, meaning make sure it's the unadulterated gospel. You know what I mean? People want to hear that I'm loved beyond any of thing that I could ever do, that I'm accepted, I'm protected, I'm provided for. Before I was even formed in my mother's womb, I was known and I was still chosen, that there's a God that knows what I was going to do and I, where I was going to fall short, and he still sent his son to die for me while I was yet a sinner. How can you say that people don't want to hear that? Yes. yes. <laughs> but we do it all the time. <laughs> And I, I'm so glad you said that because this is something you brought up at the 930 that 
you know, in our effort to do that, we'll say, we'll, we'll kind of generalize and say, you know, God, God which we, we know, like God is, you know, the three, tri, the triune being, we know he's Elohim. Um, but the authority and the power is in the name of Jesus by the act that he did on the cross, the death that he died on the cross, right? And so we'll, we'll you know, we'll kind of, oh, it's the same. It's, you know, it's God, you know, because we may not want to offend somebody or, or whatever the case may be. But I'm so glad you brought that out because that's so true. And I've been guilty of that myself before. I'm like, well, I'm not going to give him Jesus yet. I'm like, well, when though? Like, what, what? Yeah. And do we realize that in doing that, when I'm not giving them Jesus, I'm just giving them myself, right? Then it's. Ooh. Right. And then, so then that's just self-righteousness. So it's, you know, I don't want to give you this truth, but I'm going to tell you how good I am, how smart I am, how hard I work to get here, all, all of that. That's idolatry. Yes, ma'am. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, that, that is the good. Not the I word. The I word. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. That's good, though, Cindy. Thank you. Yes. That's good. We just have to pause on that. See lot. But I love this discussion because it goes back to that question we had about evaluating what we're putting out mm -hmm. in the world. You know, we think we're putting out or we think we are living kingdom, but, and not that we're not, but like just taking the time to evaluate, like, what am I really putting out there? Am I putting me out there? Like Elder Cindy said, or mm -hmm. am I, am I walking out the joy that, Jesus said, or the peace that Jesus said that he gives and no one can take away, right? Mm -hmm. there, there is no other peace outside of knowing Jesus, right? Yeah. Not truly. So, Straight up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So good. Oh, one other thing I wanted to talk through um, before we end our discussion. And I'm like, really? We're on our third talking point already? My <laughs> gosh. Um, and this is probably... I don't, I don't want to say like my favorite because everything about the message was so good. And maybe probably more because it challenged me the most um, from the messages was about, and it was the example of, so, you know, the man at, we were talking, we're still talking about the man that was at the temple that was lame, born lame, never had walked, has no like point of reference of what it is to walk, has never done it before, born lame. And so, you know, he's asking for alms and Peter says, you know, I ain't got that, but what I do have, I give you freely in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And sometimes I know for me, we'd stop there. Ooh, hallelujah. He said, rise up and walk. But the next verse says he reached out his hand, grabbed the man's hand. And when he stood up, his, his ankle bones became strong. It was in the lifting of the man that the healing presented itself. And I just had never seen, it's right there, but I just had never really seen that. And what I wanted to talk through is kind of talking through, you know, and uh, if it's okay, we'll start with you, Elder Cindy, like talk to us about embracing the Holy Spirit, that same power that rose Jesus from the dead, living in us and becoming God's hands for the moments that he's called us to. I was so appreciative, Pastor Dennis, and then you just said it, Sister Larissa, that, of, of including that scripture. It is the same exact right. power. And I always, I get hung up on the fact that it would have made perfect sense for it to be a human form of the power. That would have made perfect sense, right? But it wasn't a human form. It was the same exact power that lives within us. And each and every day, I think it's important that we literally affirm that in us and remind ourselves in that in us because because it's it's clear i'll speak for myself it's clear of how i respond to situations that demonstrate i don't always realize that i have the same power that raised jesus from the dead because if i did i would not be flipping out over here i wouldn't be right um and so it's realizing the power that we have before we um started this conversation uh so Sorcia, you were talking about how you know you're talking to someone about the message and they're like well what if i put my hand out and they don't get um get up and the and this is from years of therapy what if they do yeah. what if they do yeah. right the same you know i mean it's very easy for us to uh fear tells us to only look at one side of the coin yeah. right and so what if they do what if they do and and it's my hand is just an extension, right, of the actual healer, right, of the actual savior. I'm just the extension of that. So it's not even about, like, it's not about me, right? It's it's what Jesus wants to do through me in that moment of engaging with that person, you know? And so it's it's his power. It's, it's not mine. It's, it, you know, I mean, I think, and so I say that because I think that we should be worried about whether or not 
what happens if whatever, that's what you worry about when it's your own strength, yeah. right? Not when it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Not the same power that rose Jesus from the <laughs> What are we talking about? That's so good. Ugh. That's, that's straight up. And, um, you know, when Mary, when the, when the angel told Mary, um, I think it's in Luke one or Luke two, but, um, I'm sure it's probably Luke two. Anyways, uh, the angel tells Mary like, Hey, you're about to have a, you know, you're about to have a son. He's going to be the son of God, all these things. Right. And she, and Mary's like, how in the world could I ever do this? And the angel says, the Holy spirit will overshadow you with his power. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you with his power. And what we see from this is that every miraculous event is handled by being overshadowed by the Holy Spirit's power. Just like Elder Cindy said, that we're just an extension. We're overshadowed, meaning that it's not us. It's all him. And as we walk in that and we know that, then we don't have to worry about what ifs. But there is one thing that I want to get across is that not only is he overshadowing us with his power, but the Holy Spirit is also speaking to us, dwelling within us and communing with us. So as we stay in communication with him, right, then he'll give us the clarity on, hey, that's somebody who needs to be lifted up and he's going to be healed versus, hey, that's somebody that you need to lay hands on and then see what happens. Like, there's so many times when the Holy Spirit has been like, hey, you need to go pray for that brother right now and let him hear you pray versus, all right, just, you know, Give him something encouraging and then you're going to pray when you get to the house. Like the Holy Spirit is very uh, particular with the way he handles things, but it's about you being in communication with him throughout the weeks, right? Like that's what we have to do because if you don't, then you're going to apply every solution. You're going to apply the same solution to every situation. Oh, I got to lay hands and it's going to happen. Oh, I'm going to pray this prayer and it's going to happen. Then you you start you start not even using discernment or anything. You're just going to say someone has a need. I'm going to pray this prayer. Somebody has this. I'm going to pray this prayer. And it's the same old thing. And then we wonder why we get terrified because the result might not be what we thought it was. I could care less what I think it was because I know when I'm communing with the Holy Spirit, like how I experienced it on stage today, where you and you guys know this when you ever give a word like you just start operating. And you don't even think. I don't know what I was saying up there. I just know that I'm just moving because the Holy Spirit is doing his thing. I don't have time to think about, is someone going to receive this right? Is somebody going to do this? Is I'm not thinking that because I'm letting the Holy Spirit take over. But the only way we can truly do that is if we trust him. And the only way that we can trust him and know that he's there, know that he's not just some force, knowing that he's actually the spirit of God himself is by spending time with him. Is I was just telling this brother the other day where it's like, you got to commune with the Holy spirit so much that you can go to the store by yourself and feel that actually you're walking with somebody because you are that's how deep in communion you have to be with the holy spirit of course through the word of god that is where you start to be able to see things and be able to when he highlights somebody you don't struggle the way i struggled in the in the example today you're like oh man i've been rocking with this dude he tells me to go over there i have to go and I know if he's telling me to go over there, then he has something miraculous. That's the amazing thing about the Holy Spirit, that nothing he tells you to do is anything short of miraculous. Because if it was short of miraculous, then we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit to do it or to tell us to do it. So everything that he communes with you and tells you to do is going to be a miraculous result. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. That's another seat like what? Because it doesn't originate with us. And Elder Cindy, Elder Cindy reminds us of this all the time. It does not start with us, right? It's not our power. It doesn't begin with us. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, so I'm just, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a week for me. So I'll just put that out there. Just some personal things happening in my family and having to really, you know, walk in faith and not by what we see and stand on God's word, but. So when you're doing that, and it's so true, like when you're in the moment uh, of purpose, literally walking in purpose, you, you and you're praying or laying hands or doing whatever Holy Spirit is telling you you do, it's like, it, re it really is his confidence rising in you. You're not thinking about what you're doing in the moment. You're just obeying, right? Because you trust him, right? And then when you go home, you're like, okay, now what happened? Who said what? What happened? She did. He, what? I didn't know. Um, it's that overshadowing, and I never really thought about it that way particularly especially in the moment it really is that overshadowing of the holy spirit that's 
that's something to think about. Man, when all you have to worry about is obeying God, I know obeying God is difficult and so I, I get it, but yeah. all we have to worry about is obeying and we never have to worry about the result. Like we never have to, the result is where we get anxiety from. Yes result is going to be like the sister was talking about like what happens if like we don't if god told you to do it then even if the brother doesn't get up and walk there was purpose in that mm -hmm. there was nothing that god is telling you to do that there isn't for our good and his glory every single thing like so obey if he you know and how the holy spirit gets and you're just rolling to work or wherever and he tells you to turn this way instead of that way and you're like for real but you do it anyway you might not even experience the actual miracle in that but just know that there was a purpose for why you turned left instead of went straight and if he and if that's the way he does it when it comes to some trivial thing like driving to work then imagine when he's telling you to go lay hands on somebody or go talk to somebody there's something miraculous in that and we don't have to worry about what that miracle is we just have to be obedient because again we answer to him and we don't answer to we don't answer um to uh results we're not results driven when it comes to God. We're obedience driven. And if we stick to that, then we don't have to worry about anything past this yes. I'm just gonna say this yes, and whatever happens, happens. I don't have to worry about nothing else. The brother gets up and walks, cool. If he doesn't bet, like I just know that I was obedient and that's all we have to worry about. When I tell you that is a revelation for me, because our culture is so results oriented and that's just the culture, right? Like you put in whatever work you think you put in and I expect this on the, I expect a result. Like we talk about it at work, what's the return on the investment? Like that's the culture of, of you know, what we live as far as the world. Um, but that's, we, we're of the kingdom. So ours is obedience, not, not results, right? That is, man. And if you and if you do, if you can't get out of the results part, you know that every time you're obedient to God, the result is his will. Yeah. Always. Yeah. The result is his will always <laughs> when you say yes to him. Never anything else other than and where else do you want to be? <laughs> like, where else do you want to be? Ooh, come on, Romans 828. All things <laughs> work together for the good of those who love him and accord called according to his purpose. Amen. I tell you, okay, so because we can't do this all day, uh, Elder Cindy, is there any, um, I know there's encouragement, I want to say, is there any encouragement? What encouragement would you like to leave with the people as we move into this new week? Um, okay, okay, thanks. We've got to work. Jeez. Um, hold on, hold on. Yes, hold on, please. Give me dessert. Hold on, please. I think what I would do, no, 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 no. What, it, you know, I'm sorry. It was really what Pastor Dennis just said that our responsibility is the yes. That's it. That, that's it. And so, if even for, you know, using this opportunity of the next week as an opportunity where I'm just going to say yes and that's it, right? And, and whether, and, and, for some of us, a whole week of that seems really scary, right? So do it for a few days, right? But just see, really just, that just was so powerful to know that all we have to do is say yes. That's it. We don't even have to worry about anything else on the other side of that. God has everything and it's endless on the other side of the yes, right? We only have to go a little way to get to the yes. And then all that endlessness, you know, afterwards, that's God's job. Amen. Pastor Dennis, uh, what encouragement would you like to leave with us for this week? You know, um, the basics is always, you know, I always joke when I, I struggle to um, come up with sermon titles because I always say my sermon title would be read your Bible because <laughs> that's because <laughs> that's all I try to point people to is the Bible yeah. um, because all else happens when it, if you stick to the basics, then I think I gave some summary or overview at the end and all the little points that I gave at, in each verse, all that just falls into place as you stick to the basics. Mm -hmm. As you stay up in your word, as you commune with the Holy Spirit, as you worship God intentionally, as you fellowship, as you go to church, as you do all those basic things, the Holy Spirit has got you on everything else. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about what you exude. Like when Moses came down from the mountain after spending intentional time with God, he wasn't trying to make his face shine bright with glory. It just shone, shined bright 
with glory. He didn't have to try to make it happen, you know? And so as we stick to the basics and as we get in his word and we get in communion with him, then we are going to exude his glory. We're going to exude his love and his, his fruit of the spirit and all of these things. And as we do that, all the other things will fall into place and you will begin experiencing that, whoa, I'm walking in my purpose literally because I've been sticking to the basics. Stick to the basics and I promise you, there was a laundry list of things, but if you stick to the basics, you will find yourself walking in your purpose before you know it. And you'll actually see that your purpose has been there the entire time. Your purpose is not something that you graduate to one day. Your purpose, if you think about what you've been created for, not what you've been called to do, but what you've been created to do, it's to worship God. That's what you've literally been created to do. So as you get into what you've been created to do, everything else will fall into place. So good. Oh my gosh. Thank you both so much for pouring into us. This is, this is a really good discussion. It was very meaty too. It's a lot of, a lot of practical things we talk about too, but I think there's a lot for us to go back and really like meditate on and, and ask our, not just ask ourselves these questions, but spend time with Holy Spirit and ask these questions, right? Like, you know, what, how, what, what do people see when they look at me, Lord? You know, where do I need to change? Where do I need to say yes? What do I need to say no to? So I think you've given us a lot to, for us, for our part to do, you know, so that we can get to that yes and see the limitlessness on the other side. Y'all were preaching. Like, when are y'all taking this on the road? Because when is the next conference? When's the yes conference? Because this was really good. Ooh. We appreciate y'all. <laughs> so good. Oh, my gosh, family. So, um, as always, if we can be in prayer with you, let us know. If there's anything you need from us, please let us know. Um, you can reach out to us at prayer at cop.church, and we're always on our social media. We're at Center of Praise everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, all the things, and we're enjoying your comments and um, just messaging us. We really do appreciate the feedback, and until the next time we meet, y'all, just, you know, say yes to the basics. Next time. Bye.